Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to prevent a user from deleting a customer record or any other type of record unless certain conditions are met. For example, we'll check to see if the customer is marked active or not. If they're active, we can't delete them. If they're inactive, then we'll say, are you sure? And ask the user if they're really sure they want to delete this record before actually deleting it. Today's question comes from Anderson in North Hempstead, New York, one of my Platinum members. Anderson says, we have customers who, for one reason or another, will no longer be customers anymore. They might die, retire, move out of our area, etc. I want to allow my users to delete a customer, but only once he's been marked inactive. I feel like this is an extra check preventing them from deleting a customer too easily. What do you recommend? Well, Anderson, first... I strongly recommend against deleting customers. I like to do what's called a soft delete, whereas you leave them in your database and just mark them inactive. I get it, you don't wanna necessarily see them in all your combo boxes and your queries and your list boxes, but you still wanna keep that information for historical purposes. So reconsider allowing your users to actually delete a customer and just make a checkbox that says active or inactive. In fact, I've got an entire video that I talk about this whole process. So go watch that. I'll put this down in the links section down below in the description. Go watch my don't delete data video. But there may be some circumstances where you want to allow your users to delete records. I understand it. If they've got no orders in the system, if they've got no contacts, they're just a customer, maybe it's a, it's a mistake, you set up the customer record by accident. Okay, sure, fine. We can allow users to delete customers under circum certain circumstances. So how would we handle that? Well, what I like to do is I like to create my own delete button that will do some checks to make sure, for example, that the customer is indeed marked inactive, or you could use it to do any other kinds of checks that you want. Let me show you how. Now, before we get started, what I'm going to show you requires a tiny bit of VBA, just a couple lines of code. Don't panic. But if you've never done any programming in Access before, go watch my intro to VBA video. It's absolutely free. It's on my website. It will get you up and running and show you all the basics like how to use an if-then statement, all that kind of stuff. So go watch this first. Don't be scared. VBA is really easy, and I'll walk you through it step by step. I also want you to go watch my message box video. Again, a little tiny bit of VBA. It allows you to ask the user, are you sure? If you're going to delete a record, you want to ask the user, are you sure you want to do this? Right? We use a message box for that. So go watch this video too. Watch intro to VBA first, then watch the message box video. Once you're done, come back here and I'll walk you through the deletion. Go on, go watch it, go, and then come back. Get out of here. Okay, so here I am inside my Tech Help free template. This is a free download from my website, and if you watch those other two videos, you know all about it and where to get it and how I built it. Okay, so I got a customer list, I got a customer form, and right here, I've got an is active checkbox. Okay, and I don't want my users to be able to just come over here, click the record selector, and press delete on the keyboard, and I just deleted Deanna. And I've got uh, delete confirmations turned off in this database. So that's even worse. Okay, so, see, she's gone now. How do we prevent that? Well, if you look in the customer form events, design view, all right, go here and open up the properties, go to events. There is an on delete event right here, and there's before delete confirm and after delete confirm. And I'm telling you, with my 30 years of access experience, almost 30 years now, Programming on delete is a pain in the behind. I don't like it. I don't like using it. It's quirky. So what I prefer to do is turn off the ability to delete records with the normal method and then create my own delete button that I can do some stuff with. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to data, find allow deletions and set that to no. All right, now the user cannot delete this record from this form. All right, and if I close this, save it go back into the customer form and try to delete myself, click delete, nothing happens. That's exactly what I want. Now I'm going to make my own delete button. Okay, so design view. Now if you go up to the form design toolbar, on the command button wizard, there is an option to delete the current record. I don't like it because it just creates a macro that does the same thing that normally deleting the record would do. We want to check to make sure that it's okay to delete this person first. First, we're gonna check to make sure that the record is marked inactive, 
And if it's still active, you got to tell the user, hey, sorry, you have to at least mark this user inactive first. And you could even do something where you ask for a password if you want to. Members, I'll show you how to do that in the extended cut, how to require a password. But for the rest of us, let's just say I want to create my own button. So I'm going to slide this notes over here like this. Now I'm going to take one of my other buttons that I got down here, like orders. I'm just going to copy it and paste it. All right, slide this up here. All right, and put in here delete. We're going to delete the customer. Let's give the button a good name. Let's call it, instead of command 30, let's call it delete BTN. I like to end my buttons in BTN. All right, we're going to right click and go to build event. First thing we're going to do is check to see if the user is active. If they're active, you can't delete them. So if is active, that's the name of my field, then message box, you cannot delete an active customer. And then exit sub. Don't let them do it. It's that simple. All right, little if then, which we covered in the intro to VBA, a little message box. All right, this one just displays a message. You can't delete an active customer. Save it. Come back out here. Close it. Let's open it back up again. And let's try to delete me. All right, I'm active. Boom. Oh, can't delete an active customer. Okay. Let's mark me inactive now. And now hit delete. Okay, nothing happened. That's fine. I didn't get the message box the sub would have continued after that point. Okay, so what's next? Next, we're going to ask the user if it's okay, are you sure you want to delete this customer? But first, a quick commercial break from our sponsor. That's me. I'm the sponsor. Real quick break, right? Access Developer 1. If you're liking this VBA stuff, take my Access Developer 1 class. It's really good. It's over an hour long. Cover all the basics. A lot more than I covered in Intro to VBA. Okay, you'll learn all kinds of stuff. You'll take your access databases to the next level. Okay, that's it. See, I got to sneak the commercials in there because if I put them at the end of the class, no one watches them. Okay, so now we're going to ask the user if they're sure it's okay to delete this record. So if message box, now message box is being treated as a function now, so we have to put it inside parentheses. That's the difference between this one and this one. Message box can be both a sub and a function. A function returns a value. We're going to get a value. Okay, so if message box, are you sure, all right, and you can even put in here, delete customer, are you sure, like that, right? All right, I'll just put, are you sure, though, keep the, I'm going to keep it small so it fits in the window here. Are you sure, comma, we're going to ask for VB, yes, no, cancel. I'm going to show the yes, no, cancel buttons, and plus, I'm going to go VB critical. That gives a little bump warning, all right, that's how you add multiple things in there. Okay, close that up. Now, message box is going to return a value. Okay, and I'm going to say if, if what they say, if what they answer is anything other than VBS, then exit sub. Okay, so ask them, are you sure with the yes, no, cancel, and critical buttons? Okay, if they respond with either no or cancel, right, anything other than VBS, then exit the sub. And I'll put in here, I'm just going to message box deleting it. We're not, we haven't actually done the deletion yet. I just want to show you it's getting to that point. All right, so save it. Come back out here. Delete. All right. First, to check to see if they're active. They weren't. So it, we went to the next step. Are you sure? If I say yes, deleting it. Okay, if I do it again, I say no or cancel. See? I like to include cancel because if people sometimes aren't sure and they don't feel like uh, thinking about it for yes or no, they're just going to cancel out. Just get out of there. I, I, don't, I don't know what I clicked on. Sorry. That's why I like to include yes, no, and cancel. No and cancel are basically the same thing in this case. All right? But if is active is on, now it says you can't delete an active customer, and it never gets to that point. See, see what we're doing here? Okay, so back to our code window. Now we're actually going to put the code in here that deletes the record. Are you ready for it? Okay. It's do command dot run command ac cmd delete uh, be careful though it's not delete it's delete record it's right there delete record okay save it come back over here and let's delete actually i don't want to delete me let's go find someone else to delete let's let's delete will Riker. all right he's already inactive ready delete are you sure yes and oh, what, what what happened here the commander action delete record isn't available now what does this mean? Let's hit debug and see what... Oh, okay. So you're telling me I can't issue a delete record command? Oh, yeah, that's right. Because this form doesn't allow deletions. 
right? So that's not going to work by itself. Let's hit the stop button. Now we control that forms properties, right? So all we have to do right here is turn allow deletions on, delete the record, and then turn allow deletions right back off again. So the user can't do it. So me dot allow deletions equals true. All right, deletions are now allowed. Me dot means it's a property of the form that we're currently on. That's what me is. Okay. Then we can do the delete, and then we're going to turn allow deletions right back off again. Do it immediately. False. That way the user can't then go around and delete stuff. Okay. So make sure they're active. Ask the user if they're sure. Turn deletions on so they can delete them. Do the deletion. Then set deletions back to false again. Okay. Are you ready? Here we go. Will Riker, already inactive. Delete. Are you sure? Yup. Gone. Okay, and you'll see here he's no longer in the table. And that is how you do it. Save changes, yep. There you go. Now, you also have to be careful to make sure that you're not deleting a customer that has related child records. For example, me, I've got orders in the system. And if I delete me, then you might mess up all of your accounting. All of your orders might not show up in your accounts receivable, for example, or your, your history for sales. In my relationships video, in the extended cut, I talk about something called referential integrity. And that's where you can prevent a user from deleting a record if they have related child records. Okay, so that's important. I also cover that in my access expert classes. Access expert level one is all about relationships. Level two, I cover referential integrity, which is very important. You can also do something called cascade deletes, which that's dangerous. That says if I delete the customer, it will delete automatically all of the related child records, which I don't like. I almost never use it, right? Only for like temporary stuff, if I've got some temporary tables. We will also talk a little bit more about referential integrity in the extended cut for this video. And members, I will show you how to deal with a database that has linked tables, because as you might or might not know, you lose the ability to use referential integrity with multiple linked tables. If you've got multiple backend database files and you've got customers in one, ACCDB file and you got orders in another one, you cannot use referential integrity between two different database files. So I will show you how to deal with that in the extended cut for the members. Want to learn more? In the extended cut for members, I will show you how to ask for and require a manager password before you can delete a customer. And I'll show you how to delete child records in any linked backend database files. Because if you have your database split on a network, for example, and you've got multiple backend files, you can't use referential integrity. So if you delete a customer and you want to delete all of their orders or their contacts, for example, you can't rely on access to do it. You have to do it yourself. So in the extended cut for members, I will show you how to do both of those things. 13 minutes long. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut videos and gold members can download these databases. How do you become a member? Click the join button below the video. After you click the join button, you'll see a list of all the different types of membership levels that are available. Silver members and up will get access to all of the extended cut tech help videos, live video and chat sessions and more. Gold members get access to a download folder containing all the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus access to my full beginner courses and some of my expert courses. These are the full length courses found on my website and not just for access. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, ASP, and lots more. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and feel free to post any comments that you have. I do read them all. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Click on the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of building databases with Access. 
It's over three hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. And if you like level one, level two is just $1. And it's also free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and you can send me your question there. Click here to watch my free access beginner level one course, more of my tech help videos, or to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching this video from AccessLearningZone.com.